All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam Night class tonight. Tonight, to have uh, Tim Micah helping out with any questions or concerns that come along the way for you guys. Tim, are you with us? Good evening. Yep, good evening, everybody. And uh, let me just kind of do a quick uh, look through. Yeah, it looks like we have kind of the regulars here, so we won't go through the uh, the regular uh, go to meeting uh, rigmarole. Um, but I am going to throw out there um, the topic idea for you guys. So if you guys do have any ideas, um, we've gotten a couple of good, great ones from you guys uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, keep these night classes going as long as we can for you guys. So if you do get, have those, shoot those over and um, we'll get those incorporated for you guys. And for the people that are watching on YouTube, my email is in the link of the, uh, or in the uh, description of the video for you guys. So, all right. So nothing too exciting tonight, but um, more along the lines of the simulation side of things. Now, <clears throat> in the simulation, um, get to the main screen here. So in the simulation, there, there's quite a few little buttons in there um, that you probably don't use uh, very often, but at least this way we'll know what those buttons kind of do for you guys. So uh, two ways of getting to simulation, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you guys can right click and do simulate up and uh, grab it from right there, or you guys can just click on the simulate, and simulate button up on top and that will get in, into the simulation. So tonight what we're really gonna be, our main focus is, is this portion right up here. What does all of this do for us? Um, how is it gonna affect our simulation? How long, or how is it gonna affect you know what's going on in the, the verification for you guys. So, okay, so we'll kind of. Kevin, is it, yeah. is it, we're looking at solid verify at this point, is that correct? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Simulation. Yeah, solid verify. Great okay, point. No um, <clears throat> okay, so we'll kind of start off with uh, up on top right here with the file and options and kind of show you guys what kind of everything does and as we kind of go through things here. So, um, file. First thing to what you guys can do is you guys can save out your stock. Um, you guys can save it out as an STL or a FCT. We've kind of covered this one um, in the previous night classes one. So there's not really much in the file um, options. Now in the options right here, we can do compare our stock in our machine stock, which is gonna be the exact same thing as the little rainbow bar right here. So it's kind of a little shortcut here for you guys. And I'll, I'll explain what this does here shortly. We also have uh, machine stock measurements. So you guys can actually get a machine stock measurement, which is also the same as right here. So we can get an actual tape measure of it. And I'll show you how to use that one. Then we have down here is set up a, a region of interest. So what this region of interest is, is let's say we have a fairly large part. Uh, let, let's just say, you know, the part is six feet long, but our main focus of that part is only on the left side, the first maybe five inches. So what we can do is we can actually set up a region that is just gonna stay contained to that boundary. And here, let me just click on that for you guys. So you guys can actually set up a boundary and it's going to focus on just that and it's not going to worry about the rest of that part. So this really helps out if you guys are doing really long parts um, and we don't care what's going on on the right hand side. We just care about this specific area. Your calculation times are going to be much faster um, for your updated stock um, and playing the simulation through because we're not focusing on the entire part, we are just focusing on a certain section of the part. So we're kind of containing it, kind of like HSM where we're putting a boundary around that area. So that is the region of interest for you guys. So we can hop out of there. Now in settings, this is gonna be the one that I would say I use the most, um, just kind of bouncing back and forth, but visual properties, basically changing colors. You know, do we want our machine stock to be semi-transparent? Now, you'll see that I have my stock as semi-transparent right now, but it is really not transparent on here. Well, let me show you this. That's gonna be under the hybrid mode. So now that we're in the hybrid mode, now it's pulling off of those settings. 
So let's get back into visual here. And then you guys can also change um, the colors in here as well. So maybe you guys don't want to see gray. You want to see, you know, blue or green or we'll go yellow and green because we like our Packers. Right, Tim? <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was laughing at that one. That's good. <laughs> All right, and we won't get into favorite football teams at all. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, so then you guys also have the option to use, you know, the CAD background color. So maybe, <laughs> yeah, great, go Bears. <laughs> we have the option to use the same background as what SolidWorks is using on your main screen. Um, same thing with the gradient. You know, we can kind of switch back and forth. So you guys have a diff lot of different options of what's going on in here. Um, you know, you guys can play with it. You can move the sliders around for the transparency. Uh, maybe our fixture, you want it to be a little bit less transparent or more transparent so you can kind of see what's going on. So great area to change up basically the colors and the visual properties of what's going on in that solid verify. And that's going to only affect the solid verify only. Okay, the next one. How do you guys want to see it played through is this top portion right here. So if we hit the play button, it's gonna show you every single step, or if we hit the single step button right here, it's gonna show you every single step or line of code, I would, would say. Now with solid verify, it is not reading the G code per se. What it's doing is it's, by saying by fixed steps, is it's kind of breaking it out just like it is reading the G code. So it's gonna show you every single step move. You know, if you're doing a line segment, and then do an arc, so it's gonna do a line segment and then arc. And you guys can actually bump that up to show every you know, 100 steps if you have a lot of operations you wanna get through and just kinda of wanna see the end result. Um, you can go all the way up to 999 steps. And then you'll just kinda of see the tool just kinda of bounce around here and there, and then you know, it'll be done simulating through. Or you can do by frames per second as well. Now they tell me is 15, excuse me, frames per second is the same thing by fixed steps, but I still think the fixed steps, if you have that set to one, shows you still more uh, tool movement than if you had it set to 15 frames per second. So, Next is your, I don't know if this is a typo <laughs> or if they meant to call it clash, but uh, it's more or less your crash section. Do we want to detect against the holder in stock, uh, tool and fixture, uh, holder and fixture, and then we can actually show a report at the end of the simulation. So if you guys get all the way through and maybe you, you guys had 15 operations and you remember skipping over a couple different crashes, you guys can turn that on and it will actually show you a report of what operation it was crashing on and for each movement that it crashed through the fixture or the part or crashed with the holder and whatnot. So that's that one. Rust material and gouge filters. Um, to be honest with you guys, I have never touched uh, these numbers right here. Um, they always seem to work good, so that's why it's not touched. Um, I, I forgot that I was gonna actually look into this for you guys, but and I actually forgot to, but I'm not sure if this is the decimal places that it's going up, but um, it is the exact same number going all the way through. So I think it's just the, digits that it can go up to so it's going to cover up to uh let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten digits forward and i don't know we're in the trillions over in the end so um this one i've never used it in the last you know 10 years of using solid cam i would assume probably you guys aren't going to touch it as well um, i'm guessing this what it's going to do is it's going to go down to this tolerance for rest material, so if there's any remaining stock on there, it's gonna kinda adapt for that as well when we use just the rest material option. Okay, graphics cards. Now, if you guys are running a good graphics card, you're gonna, roll, you're gonna wanna run with the hardware OpenGL and using the advanced hardware accelerator. If you guys are using a the Intel card and you guys don't have a graphics card and this is just going to be for the Intel card only um, for those of you guys that aren't sure what I'm saying is is if you guys go buy a laptop from let's say Best Buy um, there's no video card 
but under the device manager for the video settings, it says Intel integrated, uh, let me just find it here. Device manager under video or display adapters. So if it just shows an Intel HD graphics card right here, that means you're gonna wanna run with the DirectX. So um, the DirectX was really originally built just for that Intel card. Now, if you guys are running maybe a little bit older for a computer and don't have that Intel chip, um, maybe it's just some other uh, graphics card in there, then you guys can run with the, sop the software OpenGL, which is basically going to be not using any of your video card. It's just going to be going off of your CPU processor to build everything. So, and this is going to be the same thing as if you guys go up to your SolidWorks settings and go to performance and right here, the use software OpenGL. So it's gonna take the same lines as that. Okay. Stock splitting. Um, I'm gonna hold off on showing you guys this real quick. So we'll, we'll get to this just in a second here. So that's it for just the general settings. Now, accuracy. Now, how accurate do you want your model to be? Now this has no reflection on your G-code. This is only visualization for you guys inside here. Um, so right now <clears throat> we're set to 0 0.01 millimeters because the millimeter part here. Um, and then you can do your tool facet types, internal, external, mixed. Um, this is another one um, that I have not touched at all. Um, I always kind of let it at external. Now, if you guys are seeing your part, like we are right here, and you know, you're know you doing a circle, but you're seeing a lot of facets in there, we can tighten that tolerance up and it's gonna be more, uh, more smooth cut in there that you guys are gonna see. Now, the hard thing is, is the tighter that we put that tolerance, the more time it's gonna take. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. If you guys just are trying to get through the part, make sure there's no crashing, and don't really care about the visualization of the part, crank that baby up, put that at a really high tolerance and she'll play through super fast. If you guys are worried about, you know, make sure you're getting every nook and cranny in there, um, working on, you know, a really tight precision part, you wanna make sure everything's good, tighten that baby down, but it's gonna take a little bit more time to play it through for you guys, so. All right, and then we have, oh, for you on here. Uh, this is just deleting your updated stock file. So basically, um, if we play this all through, it's going to save a STL file of that updated stock. So as we keep adding operations in your tree, it doesn't have to keep updating the stock. Um, so if you want to kind of get a fresh slate and um, you know delete that stock, you can delete it from right there, or you guys can do it from the cleanup cam part, which is right here and uh, updated stock files right here and or right here and right here. This one right here, sorry. So exact same thing it's doing right there. It's just doing it within the operation itself. Okay, let's hop back in here. Any questions so far? Okay. And while we're waiting for, for questions, I guess, you know, Kevin, that's, those are good points. You know, it kind of gives you a little bit of background information about how SolidCam is optimizing the user interface so that you get better performance. So saving those STL files and keeping things, uh, you know, so it doesn't have to calculate so long. But yep. yet, hey, if you want to get a good, fresh, clean start, uh, you're going to have a little bit longer calculation time, but you get uh, a lot uh, uh uh, you know, you can eliminate some sort of uh, issues that you're maybe seeing graphically. Yep, absolutely. And as if you guys are in here and maybe as you rotate your part, you see like a little sliver, like a little triangle, just shooting off in la la land. Uh, and then you rotate it back and it goes away. That's a great indicator that there's something going on with your graphics card. Um, so two things to do, you can do right there is you can go to 
the well, we'll use my computer for instance. So we're using a NVIDIA card, so I can go to the NVIDIA site, or you guys can go right to the SolidWorks site and maybe check for an updated driver. If that does not fix it, then switch over to you know maybe that. Okay, so if that doesn't fix it, try the um, the software OpenGL. If that does fix it, that means all fingers are pointing. There's something wrong with your video card. So. And that's not just in Solid Verify. That's going to be in anything in your SolidWorks. If you rotate apart and you kind of get little slivers popping off in La La Land as you, if you rotate around, that's something's going on with your video card there. So, and give us a call. We can help you guys out without with that as well. Okay, tools self intersect. Um, we can do check stock. Uh, modeling for self-intersects. We can do against the target. We can check against the fixture. Um, this one I don't use very often just because it's going to tell us if we're crashing into, if we're having an intersection, um, as well as the rainbow, uh, the stock target comparison down here. So, so what I'm going to do now is, let me play this here real quick. So it's, it's come up um, a couple times as, well, I have a slug. Can, how can I get rid of that slug? And maybe we have another operation where that slug needs to be popped off, and you have another operation where it's going to be going through that spot and you're showing a crash. Well, we can get rid of that slug two different ways. Um, we can come up here and click this button right here. Come on. Oh no, that's my redraw button, I'm sorry. Um, what am I thinking here? This button right here. No. Okay, I'm losing my mind here. Where is this one? I'm sorry. <laughs> the split, unsplit machine stock. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at your, your stock, it's gonna look at your target, and you can actually remove items. So if we click on this, it's telling me that I have two solids. That's my solid one and my solid two. So if I want to, I can actually come in here and delete that selected, say yes, and we can exit out, and now that slug has disappeared. Now the only thing about that is, if I go to play it through again, my slug is back. So what you can do in that instance is, <clears throat> if we go to our general, we can, this is that stock splitting. So I can automatically remove any split solids or I can manually select the ones to be removed. So if I click on automatic now, hit okay. We'll play that through again. And as soon as that slug has disconnected from the model, it automatically disappears for you. And it's gonna keep that for you guys. So going forward, if I keep going down and adding operations in there, that slug will not be in the way for you guys. So it's kind of something that uh, actually I didn't even know about that up until about a year and a half ago um, that I would actually create a dummy operation and just suppress the G code so I wouldn't run into collisions kind of going forward. So, but um, it's in there for you guys. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. So I've learned something tonight and that's something I've never seen before either. So that's, a, <laughs> that's a cool, cool little tip. I like that. Yep. She works good. <clears throat> okay. So let's kind of go over the buttons. Zoom to fit. Um, get that part, you know, fit, fit the screen of where it is. So if we have the part, um, every once in a while, it kind of gets in La La Land, hit that. It's going to zoom right into that part. And then you get it back to size. And we know it's every once in a while it gets off in La La Land and trying to scroll your, your mouse wheel. You're pulling up on your uh, 3D connection mouse, trying to get it back. But um, that's a quick little um, zoom to fit button. Now, fit by a hey, box. Kevin, you, you, you were you were you were asked you you mentioned something about that uh, working area or the focus area. Does that button take you to that focus area of the part? Yep, that's going to be in your focused area of the part as well, and that is. Um, it's, not, it's not focus area. I forget what you called it, but it was up there yeah, in the menu. Yeah, your um. Your region of interest. Yeah, that's it. Region. There so you go. 
when you have the region of interest turned on, you can actually click on the, re the, the region of interest. And then when you do your zoom to fit, like you're saying, Tim, it's just going to come and focus on that portion. So like far as uh, interest area is this hole, when we do a zoom to fit, it's going to come in just like, come on, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Cool. Okay, so then you have uh, fit by a box. Um, this is the one that I use a lot is I need to get into fine detail. Just click and drag, and it comes right into it. So pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you rotate as well. Um, now, you guys can rotate by holding down your center trackball on your mouse, and that's going to rotate as well, or you can rotate this way. Um, they have um, finally updated it. so. The solid verify is going to zoom, rotate, and do everything just like it is when you guys are working in your SolidWorks view. So, um, what I mean by that is, I'll just do a zoom to fit. And, you know, maybe I want to zoom in just to down here, just have your mouse cursor right by it, where before it would just kind of zoom in and out. And that came out in, I want to say, 17 SP1 or SP2 um, that that came out. So, Wherever your mouse cursor is, it is now going to zoom in just like how SolidWorks does. So, but if you do need to rotate, there is a rotate button right there. Then you got a zoom in, zoom out feature. Um, pretty easy, self-explanatory. Here's your regular mouse cursor if you just want to get back to having a mouse cursor on there. <clears throat> now we have our tape measure. So let me just do a top-down view. Now this tape measure, it's not the most accurate. Um, because it's all based off of where you click. So if we do, and we can't grab like entity points like we can in SolidWorks, but if we wanted to get a pretty close, we can click one and two, and it's going to give us, you know, our distance, uh, where it is in X, Y, and Z. Um, why oh so the i guess i was thinking where in relation to the coordinate system it is but it's actually going straight across for you guys and why um this is one i don't use too often just because when we're getting to that um i'd rather use my stock target comparison to make sure i'm right on size versus um Kind of basing it off of a, a a tape measure right here of getting a measurement so i mean it's there um this does kind of help if you guys are using like soft jaws and let's say we're machining around the outside and it's going to be cutting into that soft jaws you can get a measurement off that way um that's where i've used it before but other than that you know it's a it's a simple tape measure um giving you a distance of you know how big an opening is or you know like i said a ledge how much it needs to be and whatnot so then we kind of went over the the region of interest for you guys um choosing lights type um I, I i don't see too much difference right here to be honest with you um i'm guessing they're trying to base it off of this is kind of like a real-time view versus a uh, i think we're kind of trying to uh, gear more towards the realistic view like SolidWorks versus non-realistic view or the lights, uh, shadows, and all that stuff. So that's one I've never used. Okay, of course, we have our, you know, different planes right here. So you got your top, front, left, right. Um, there is no isometric right here, but you can click the isometric button right here. Um, now, there is no ooh, trisymmetric. I know there's three different isometric views. I can't remember what the, the other two are, but um, those aren't in here, but we just do have the standard isometric view for you guys. Now, it seems like all the newer installs that I've been doing with a bunch of customers have already been defaulted to this hybrid view. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Um, it it has everything in transparent. Um, you can see through it. And like I said, we can change those transparencies, but a quick click of getting back to the normal view and um, in the render mode. Uh, it's going to show you everything clean, crisp, um, not being, you know, unless you need to see through the part. Um, the other one I like to do, use is the um, 
the hidden lines. So if I need to kind of look down in you know a side view to see how deep a, a drill hole is going um, to make sure we're getting down in size, that's a great one to use as well. And then we have a redraw. Um, I'm not sure what this redraw button does. It's never done anything um, unless we play it through and it Yeah, see, I'm not seeing any difference of the redraw. So I'm not sure, unless it's a refresh button, uh, if something didn't get refreshed all the way through. Um, not 100% sure on that one. Now, one thing that kind of brings me to is, let's say we played everything through, but now I want to just see a specific operation again. Just click on the operation that you guys want to see. So it's highlighted and hit the play button and it will play that specific operation through for you guys. So pretty simple, easy. Um, like I said, you can hit your uh, control key and then you can play whatever ones are through as well. So, okay, so where are we at here? <clears throat> so right here is your multi-core option. This is gonna utilize all of your cores versus just certain cores. I should be able to hover, there is multi-core support. So are we, do you wanna utilize all your cores or just certain cores? The next one, the little rocket ship. This is your activate, deactivate, updated stock. So let's say um, you guys are getting in here and we go to play just the chamfer operation through and it's just, here, let me do this. Hop out of here, simulate and we play it through and that looks nothing like it should. Um, none of my previous operation, operations are showing up for us. Well, that's our little rocket ship has been turned off. So if we turn that on, it's gonna grab that updated stock from all those other operations in that STL file and update it. So now, let me hop out of here real quick and we'll do a simulate. Now you'll see our updated stock is there. So that is our little hey, rocket ship. Kev, yep. Kevin, Kevin, just a quick comment there, Ronnie, you've kind of pointed out, and I think he's probably got onto something there that uh, redraw buttons probably from legacy versions that it's just they never got rid of the button, but it was just kind of based oh, yeah. on, um, you know, graph, graphics cards. and Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess I totally forgot about that because that does happen in time I to think time. He, I, I, yeah, I think that's probably right to just uh, give you the option to – Force redraw. Yeah, Ronnie's always keeping me on my toes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so we have, um, we talked about doing the uh, the stock splitting or unsplitting for you guys. Um, now, when I was showing you guys in the manual mode in the settings right here, because we have it on automatic, if we had it on manual, this would automatically be turned on for you, sitting off in the side for you. So that's the difference between manual, automatic, and off. Um, so that's your, getting rid of your, your slugs, uh, let's say that. Show hide fixture. Maybe we need to get rid of our fixture, don't need to see it. Let me scoot this back over here. Um, coordinate system, turn on or off, pretty simple. Tool holder, let me uh, play it through here. Maybe that tool holder is getting away of our top view, trying to see down in there. We can just turn off that holder and then our tool is gonna show for us. Sorry, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, so there's our tool holder, and same thing here, tool. Um, so if you don't wanna see the tool actually going in there, but it will still simulate it like the tool is there for you guys as well. Okay, so our rainbow bar. Let me get our tool back here, our holder. All right. So here is your stock target comparison. This is something that gets you, well, at least personally I use a lot. Um, this is gonna tell us where we have leftover material or where we have gouged our part. Um, you know, maybe we got too close, um, something along that line. I, you were gonna say something, Tim. Hey, hey yeah, yeah, Kevin, before you go on, go on to this, George brings up a good question and I'm not sure if, if it's uh, true or not, but 
when you turn the holder off, will it crash detect for that holder that's just hidden, or yep. does yep. it just remove it from the yep. So what it, basically what it's doing is like when you guys hide a a part in SolidWorks, it's just hiding that part. It's not suppressing it. Like it's completely removed it. It's just hiding it. So it will still show the uh, crash on there. And just for uh, peace of mind, let's hop over to this guy right here. And let's go down to levels and let's do minus five millimeters. Let's get this so it crashes with the holder. Play it through, nope. So you can see our holder's crashing, but now let's single step again. I'll turn the holder off and it will still show us as a crash. So it's basically just kind of hiding it, um, but it's still gonna do the full crash detection for you as well. So perfect. Great question though. It was. All right, so the stock target comparison, this is gonna tell you where we have material left, where we need to go in and maybe do some rest machining, um, where we have material still left over. Now, how I have mine set up is just a little bit different. Um, I like to have, it, the colors are completely up to you guys. Um, I guess it's just personal preference. I always see green is good. Um, you know, and then we can go like with the lighter blue and a darker green and a darker blue. Now, what I will always do here is I won't leave this at zero because what happens is if we run on zero, we're running into a accuracy uh, kind of merge together. So right now we have, let's see if we can open this, we have an accuracy of 10,000 here, but we have anything that's below, or I'm sorry, 0 0.01 millimeters or anything that's above 0 0.01 millimeters is going to tell us that we still have material in there. So what you guys can do is if we want to get really accurate, um, let me open up a part that uh, that's normal numbers for me. So again, open. All right, so let's do simulate here. Solid verify. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to have, do like a 0 0.001, or actually one tenth in there. So now anything that's gonna be showing yellow for me is good. Now, if I have that at zero, then I'm kind of running in between the variables of my accuracy that I have set up right here. So if we put this down at, you know, we're at 1,000 accuracy, but, my stock target in comparison is going to check for anything that's four tenths to one tenth is going to show orange. That's kind of a little bit tough to, to grasp because you could be looking at it and be like, well, it's still showing orange. I'm still showing material. That's because we just don't have our accuracy set down in front of us. So two things we can do is either increase the ac or the, I guess should decrease this number. So make a smaller number so we can do like a tenth or what we can do is we can increase your stock target comparison. So we'll just leave that at that. I'll leave that at one tenth and we'll put this at five thou and five thou. And we'll put this one at 10 thou. And this all is mostly, like I said, this is all just dependent on the solid verify itself. And once I hit okay, those numbers are saved for me. So we play this through here. And if I want, I can come into my general. Let's put uh, 500. Yeah, Ben, yeah, clash, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be crash. Actually, I, w I was, uh, when Ben asked that question, I did a little bit of uh, investigating. The word clash is sometimes used in play in, instead of crash. So here, here in uh, 
Um, is that what Google told us? It, told it, you? It, yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> so, something with the UK, the UK and um, modeling and design checking and things like that is kind of kind of interesting. So I think they might have actually intended to keep to make it clash versus crash and <laughs> clash crash. Go gotta love Google. Yeah, we don't want to see either one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you'll see guys right now that I, I set it at every 500 steps and we're doing 1,000 accuracy and it's taking a little bit of time. Um, we're gonna see nice crisp corners and all that, um, but it's taking us just a hair longer here. I was hoping, let's see, is, do we have Danny in here? No, nope, don't see Danny in here. And come on, Kevin. Kevin Ben's asking about HSL, and I'm not sure the instant the where's HSL being picked up at. Uh, and Ben, what is it, what do you mean by HSL? Okay, well he's writing that. So now if we do execute. Pretty much everything is showing green for us. Um, you get that that little carry over, you know, kind of mix match around. That's just, you know, basically tolerance, you know, of, of what's going on here. So if you have a little bit of green, yellow kind of mix between, you're you're good. Um, as you can see, though, at the bottom of our part, we still have material around that ring. So let's see the different acronyms you have named so far. Maybe I got it wrong. Just Oh, HSM. Is that what you mean, Ben? HSM. Okay. Yeah, HSM is where we were talking about um, using the constraint boundary to, uh, when you use HSM, you set up a constraint boundary of where you want it to focus on. And that's kind of what the, um, uh, I keep forgetting what this is, the region of interest I was talking about. So an HSM is just an operation yeah, about here and define HS. working area. Yep, HSM right here for the working area. That's where I was getting at. HSM. Oh, I'm sorry. So HSM stands for high speed machining. HSR is high speed roughing, and HSS is high speed surfacing. Okay. Uh, I'm getting a simulation here. All right, so we went over the rainbow bar, um, and here's your, your stock splitting. Actually, let me pause this for a second. So we've seen how slow, I guess I would consider that slow, it took um, to simulate that through. So now if we do a simulate and go to our settings, and we'll go to accuracy, and let's kick this up to instead of 1,000, we'll do 10,000. You'll see we get through that part much faster but in return we're still seeing a little bit of faceting or facets are the the, the little triangles um that are, are being created here so we'll let this finish off here and we'll just go as fast as we can here And the place I notice it the most is like holes. So you can see right here, our our perfect circle of now it kind of looks like a, a stop sign here. Um, not as nice finish down here. Um, we got some little bit of you know imperfections going on here. And like I said, that has nothing to do with your G code and how your part's going to turn out. That is just for the purpose of your solid verify rate in here for you guys, just as a visualization. So next is you can do a show hide gouges. So maybe you don't want to do the stock target comparison and you just want to show any gouges. You can actually click on that and it will highlight any gouge areas um, that are there for you guys. And usually it highlights those in green. So if we have that on, 
and I don't see any gouges within the tolerance range that I've set for it. So um, some of these will be grayed out sometimes, um, depends on what options you have over here. So we can actually do a show hide rest material and anything that comes in as red. Uh, actually, let me get back to my other part. Close out here real quick. And go over here. And simulate. Solid verify. Great minds think a lot alike there, Ronnie. I was okay. wondering the same thing. And I, I think um, there's settings in the um, facet tolerance are independent of, of what you're seeing with the uh, the stock or, or the comparison uh, functionality. You kind of pick up what Ronnie is asking there, um, Kevin. Yeah, let me, uh, let me make sure I'm not crashing this one anymore. Okay, so what's Ronnie okay. asking here? Uh, does the low resolution affect the compare? Um, well, that's, yeah. okay, let's get in there. Um, go to simulate and play this through here. So right now we have settings set up as actually a 0 0.01 millimeters. It is not, it, so let's see, how can I word this? Um, it's, <laughs> um, trying to think the best way to get this crossed. This is where Greg Payton would hop in and be like, Kevin, you need to explain it this way, but Greg's over uh, in Germany <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, um, in Germany. So, so yeah, so, so the, the comparison functionality, what is this, calc this, what is this looking at? Is, is this, this taking into consideration the faceting? This no? is taking into consideration of what was produced down here on the model. Now, what was produced down here at the model is based off of the accuracy settings right here. So right now we have an accuracy of uh, 0 0.01 millimeters. So the little triangles, each triangle is, the length of that triangle is 0 0.01 millimeters. Now, um, this stock target comparison is just looking at what's right here. So if I go, so we'll, we're, we'll look here and pretty much everything is yellow, kind of meaning it's on size for us. So now if we go to our accuracy, let's put that at 1.0. Play it through. Now you'll see that we're getting it's affecting this because I'm telling it that this model that I just machined in space has an accuracy of one millimeter, but over here I have it set up as anything that's you know gouging in by 0.25 millimeters is showing a gouge, but technically it's really not gouging in. So does that kind of help? You, I think you dro drove it home. I, that okay. that is exactly what. So yes, the the okay. testing tolerance does affect your comparison. Yep. Is that right, Ronnie? You you agreeing with uh, that answer? I th I think I've seen it. Um, you know, in in certain areas that you know, if you're looking at something in a in a spherical part of the part, and you can see sliver lines, you can maybe play with your accuracy to check if. Uh, if it's a fasting tolerance or your actual accuracy. Yep. yep. Now here's another thing that gets Perfect. off every once in a while too is um, let's go to our accuracy here. Let's do our point one. Okay. Play it through again. Everything looks good, but my fixture isn't looking as good as it could. Now that is going to be pulling from your facet settings of your fixture, or let's say maybe your your 3D stock that you have in there. Um, if we go into our stock here, you guys will also see that you have a facet tolerance in here as well. So right down here at the bottom, that facet tolerance is a little too large. Um, you know, this is just doing a box model, so it's pretty simple, easy. But if you're doing a 3D model, it's 
it's still not looking as good as you would like it, change this facet tolerance in here, and then that's gonna make it clear in the solid verify. Same thing as your fixture. So if we do define fixture, you will see you have a facet tolerance there as well. So if I tighten that facet tolerance there, instead of doing 0.1 millimeters down to 10 millimeters, this hole right here, it won't be faceted anymore. So hopefully that kind of clears, helps you guys out. All right, let me play this through real quick. <clears throat> So if you guys want to just take a quick glance at things to make sure you have your part done, um, instead of kind of looking for the colors, you guys can come click on this button, which is the show hide rest material. Um, should be, should be showing some rest material on here. It should be showing it in red for you guys. Let's today did I machine it out and not think about it? Yes, yeah, I show <clears throat> I show rest material in the corners. I mean, okay to that. We should be showing For some reason, it's not showing in red. See, right now, this outside perimeter should be showing in red. Did you adjust it in your colors? I don't think so. Oh, this is... Uh... <laughs> Okay, so what we're doing right here is we're showing hiding our rest material. So we can kind of see where the remain stock is. Usually this shows up as red of where we have remaining stock. Um, let's uh, go to visual properties. Yeah, we got rest material showing as red. Okay. What am I missing here? I just can't do it too there. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I swear, guys, I had it working earlier. Let me uh, hop out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cleanup cam part. Good example. And now, when I go to my simulate, everything's going to rebuild. And there. Yeah, for some reason, it's showing as. Huh. I can't. Uh... Sorry, guys. I don't know what I did. To, uh, change my uh, solid verify settings here why it's not showing that but um, <clears throat> normally that would show up in red it looks like it's showing up in gray now of where kind of things are so we can see we still have some material right here in the corners um, turn it on again still got material over here oh, yeah, that's really bugging me though I can't figure out why that's not showing up red but I'll have to look into that for you guys Okay, so right here is, um, you know, if you want to show or hide the target model itself. So we have no model at all. Um, and there's that. Boy, I just can't figure out why it's not doing it. Okay, so now you have the option over here to load target faster using the CAD facet tolerance. Um, this one is pulling off of your facet tolerance from your target, if I remember correctly here. Um, so whatever you have set for that facet tolerance there, it's gonna pull it in from that, um, vice versa. 
So we can turn that on or off by just kind of going back and forth right here to go off the CAD or using the facet tolerance that you set up in here. All right, Ronnie's got, I don't know what it's been. Solid verify rest and red instead of gray to figure out. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Yeah, Ben's telling me, to, leaving me notes for uh, figure out why it's not showing up in red. Okay, so that's kind of all the buttons inside Solid Verify. Um, now, if you guys play it through and it's showing all gray, you have the option right here to, to turn on single color. Um, we also have the option to show your simulation data. So if you guys want to see your XYZ movements, I have come across it as, um, you know, they're, they want to see their simulation data. They play it through and they're like, well, my numbers aren't changing over here. Uh, just click and drag that box out just a, a hair. And that will show you your numbers and you can actually move these over and this will um, re remain. Um, if you guys ever have it where you go to do your simulation and this box disappears, give me a call right away. There's an easy fix for it. Something got um, went haywire with the registry and that usually comes after a Windows update. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you, Microsoft. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that. <laughs> And then my, this is, that happens with my windows for everything. It's yes. like, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is going to show you your simulation colors. Now, this really doesn't take an effect right here because we're doing solid verify. Um, where this really takes an effect is the uh, host CAD uh, where it's rapidly down, uh, doing a feed um, and whatnot. But so these top two really aren't going to relate for you guys, but all the colors down below are going to correlate with the colors. Now, let's say I want, I, I, I just, I can't see that orange very well. Um, you know, it's just not a color that I can see well. Seems like a lot of us here at Solid Cam are colorblind. So maybe we just don't like that orange color. Um, so you guys can actually change that color. Now, where do I go to change that? That's right in your tools. So if I open up the tools, I can go to my tool number two and change that to, uh, Tim likes pink, so we'll go with pink. And we'll change hey it now. To pink. <laughs> <laughs> so now, save and exit, simulate. Now we're not showing that orange, we're changing it up to a different color. So if you guys don't like the colors that are there, that color is actually set in your tool library itself. All right, so now, what are these buttons? We have exit, and that's to exit the simulation, so you can actually click this one, or you can just hit the exit out right here. We have what's called operation next mode. So if I hit this, it's gonna do one operation at a time, and it's gonna stop. So it's like it's doing that M00 at the end of each operation. And you guys can see over here what operation it's gonna be doing next. So it did that, so I can just kind of quick buzz through it and go that route. Next one over is single step. And that's going to show you every single line movement. Now, instead of clicking this, I know I mentioned this in the past, is if you just have your mouse cursor on it and you tap your space bar, you can actually just, I don't know if you guys can hear, but I'm tapping my space bar and you can single step it that way. That way it gives your uh, your finger a little break on the, the click in the mouse. Or you can just hold down the space bar as well, as long as you're over that. As soon as you move your mouse cursor off of it, it's going to stop. Um, then you got pause, play. And Turbo is just going to pretty much jump through as fast as it can for you. So, all right. I think that covers all the, boy, I didn't think that would take up an hour going through all those simulation. <laughs> Hopefully that was uh, some learning for you guys. <laughs> I think a lot of that was my fault. I got too involved. <laughs> no, no. It's great to have involvement. But <laughs> any questions, guys, on the uh, the verification or the solid verify, I should say, because I know there's a lot of stuff kind of, you know, we've got rocket ships and we got little heart rate monitors and little clampy things. So let's see. Can you place optional stop at the end of each tool? Actually, Ben, by default, it is. Um, I would say 75% of the posts out there are defaulted to have a M01 in there. If you would like to do a M00, a full machine stop, that's gonna be 
uh, let's say I want to do it miscellaneous parameters and you have a M or a stop M00 and if you just switch that to a yes it will put a M00 in there for you have a mill turn part and use the setup jaws imported a cylinder for chuck body and put it into the fixture section as 3d model when simulating the chuck body does it not show chuck body um ronnie shoot me an email tomorrow and give me and i'll give you a call because i am i know it's hard to kind of explain through typing here more or less me reading it too so with that one if you could, that'd be great. I can dive into that for you. Yeah, Sorry. It sounds like the the um, fix, fixture definition is something. Yeah. Something do you, like Randy, do you have that um, the JAWS set up in your fixture and your yeah. setup? I would assume you would. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, uh, Ron, I guess without seeing that, it would be really tough. Should I put you on the spot, Ronnie, and switch? No, I'm kidding. I won't switch. put you on the spot. <laughs> hey, 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 Ronnie, the presenter. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I have the occasional issue where simulation stock verify opens with a blank white screen. Host CAD mode works. Something I'm doing wrong. Okay. In that case, um, and Eric, let me just make sure I'm reading you right. So when you go to do a solid verify, you're just getting a white screen right here. Correct. Okay, two things is one, um, do what you could have is a sketch point way over in La La Land. So if we go like this, and if I have a sketch point way over here, it's looking at it as this big, huge area. And so is it, uh, Eric, is it showing you the coordinate system? Didn't see the coordinate system either. Okay, so if you don't see a coordinate system at all, uh, no matter what, we should still see a little bit of a coordinate system. I mean, I got this thing zoomed out as far as it goes and it, it was still showing our 1-1. Our more than likely, what is going on is it's a video card. So, um, and if you want, I can definitely uh, er, give you a jingle tomorrow, but what is happening is in your option or settings general, try, excuse me, uh, try switching this over to software OpenGL and see if that makes any difference. If it works perfect with software OpenGL, then we just need to update your driver. So, and the best place to go for your drivers, I'm not sure if I ever went over this before, but go to solidworks.com, do a search. They changed up their site, so let's see, video card. Okay, let's try driver. SolidWorks switch, switched up their site, and I don't like it. Big, big time. Yep. Hard. Not at all like it used to be. There we go. I don't like change. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so here's where I like to go. Um, you know, you guys can get drivers from your guys', you know, the video card that you bought it from, but it seems like these ones are more tested and proven drivers. Um, but let me, let me keep me in the loop, Eric, and let me know. Um, I don't want... You, you definitely should not be seeing white screen all the time. And like I said, if you switch it over to that software open GL, everything looks perfect. Then we just have something going on with your video card. Is this on a laptop, Eric, or a desktop? Doesn't always happen. Try to, okay. Hmm. Desktop, Quadro P1000. Oh. Yeah. Um, try that. If that works, um, Let's try a driver, and if that doesn't work, give me a, uh, shoot me an email, and I'll give you a call, Eric, and we can go to Plan B. And 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 everybody on on the uh, call, you know, that, that's kind of leads me to a point of, 
you know, hey, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to call into the help desk. These yeah. guys are there and, and they can troubleshoot these things over the phone and, and jump into a go-to meeting, take a look at the exact issue and get you going r- real quick. So don't uh, don't suffer in silence. Just uh, give, give them a call and say, hey, uh, I'm seeing something. I don't quite understand what I'm seeing. And, you know, within a couple of minutes, these guys typically can have you taken care of. Yep. And we like talking to you guys. All right, Chris, in HostCat, it tells me I'm crashing when I'm running fast, but running slow. Okay, so, um, Chris, I think they actually addressed this one in uh, Solid Game 2018. Um, in, let me get to there. So what Chris is saying is when he's in HostCat, and I assume you're doing the solid verification right here in HostCat, um, if he plays it through fast, it's showing a crash, kind of like we're going right here. So to say no, but if we slow it down, can I play? There it goes. It's not showing a crash. Well, maybe this one is, and it's not all the time, right, Chris? Or is it all the time for you? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what happened is there. Um, what's happening with Chris is if he plays it through really fast, um, what they did is they changed the. Uh, it's like they changed the the accuracy. So when you go really fast, it loosens up the accuracy, and then we get it shows a crash, but it's not really crashing. Um, that was a issue with tolerancing. But from looking at the release notes, they have fixed that, Chris. So, and I, I can't remember, someone told me about it as well. And um, but it was turned in and it was fixed for you guys. So, hopefully that helps you out. And we'll get that 2018 uh, rolling out to you guys shortly here. Well, thanks for coming, yeah, Ronnie. Do you, do you, yeah, Kevin, you have an update on 2018 and, and want to mention that to these guys or yeah. any thoughts or concerns with doing that? So, um, you know, 2018 is released for you guys. Um, it is out. What I would like to do is um, my personal preference to you guys, and this is completely up to you guys. Def- you can go download it. But what I want to do is I really want to go through. They've added a lot of cool stuff in for 2018. Sydney only showed us a couple of cool things uh, that they added in there, but there is many more cool things. So after um, our last class, which is going to be showing off Eureka with Ronnie, um, I want to break it into sections of the kind of the what's new in 2018. So what you guys can expect. Um, it is released out into service pack one right now. Um, so it is up and running. Um, haven't had any issues personally. Um, but like I said, I would, if I was in your guys' shoes, let me tell you about the the new features that are in there. And then once we're kind of through that, um, you know, then have at her. But like I said, it's completely up to you guys if you guys want to download it or not. But it is on the on the site for you guys as well. So, but any other questions, guys? I don't see anything coming through. All right. Well, and, and once and, again, and guys, thank you, Ronnie, for, for joining us. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you guys all for joining us. Um, and that's what I kind of was getting at is thank you guys for, you know, sitting through the night class. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. I know it's not the the funnest class that we've had talking about uh, Solid Verify, um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there, and I, w- I want to make sure that you guys know everything there is to know about it so you guys can be more productive on your end. And, you know, like I said before, if you guys are running across stuff or ideas, shoot those over to me in email and we'll get those added in as well. So, but Tim, you got anything else before we wrap her up? Yep. Yep. Just wanted to say thank you for everybody out there and Kevin, thank you for a great, another, another great class. Yeah, um, hey, hey, I picked up some pretty cool things that were, uh, um, you know, that I had never seen before. So that's, uh, I know these customers, everybody appreciates you doing what you're doing here with uh, giving these night classes for everyone. Yeah. Thanks guys. Love doing them. But uh, if I guys, if I don't talk to you guys in the meantime, Ronnie, I want to talk to you tomorrow. But uh, the rest of you guys, if I don't talk to you in the meantime, have a great uh, rest of your week. Hopefully you had a great uh, long weekend. And we will see you guys next week on 
we're gonna we're, we're gonna be focusing it's kind of based off of the chamfer recognition um, doing chamfers on 3d parts going up and down angles and the best way to approach doing a chamfer recognition on a 3d part but we're not going to use chamfer recognition that is clear as mud for you guys <laughs> so that sounds interesting it's a good it's going to be a good one but have a great wonderful night guys and we will see you guys next week see you guys thanks thanks all bye-bye